as I said, it is if you if you be very careful, you can take the balance for the whole equation at the same time. But to be sure that you are not missing any terms, I would suggest to you to do the balance around the shell for each face individually. Okay? If you look into the shape of the hour shell here, there are two directions that you can balance. The first direction would be on the top and the bottom. The shell, I mean the flux going on the top and coming out on the bottom. Right? This is our shell. So we, we say that right now we have VRZ and VCC, which are not zero. Okay? VRZ is Z momentum transfer in R direction. So the momentum is transfer in R direction. What does it mean? It means that VRC going in this direction. RC in and VRC coming out. Right? Going into the shell from inside of the cylinder and going out of the shell from the outside surface. But remember, this is cylindrical. So you can write down in this direction as well. So anything from the center going into the shell is called VRC in. And from the outer surface going outward, that's VRC going out. Okay? So it's coming in at position where R equal to R. And it is coming out at the position where R equal to R plus delta R. Because from the center to this point, this is R. Let's call this generally R. And from this to outer surface, that's R plus delta R. Location is slightly different. All right? That's VRC. The second one would be VCC. That's Z momentum transported in Z direction. That means it's going according to Z direction. Okay? So Z direction going into the shell in Z direction, that means it's going into this kind of highlight area. So our VCZ coming in is going into this ring. Okay? This is our VCZ going in. For the one going out, it's coming out of this ring area as well. Okay? So it's coming in all over the place along this um, cylindrical ring. Input is located on very top of the shell. So therefore this is where Z equal to zero. Output is located where Z equal to L. Okay? So now we have transfer of both components. If you take the balance in red direction first, or, yeah. So, in red direction, that means the transfer is taking place across the cylindrical surface. Or on the side. Okay? Input would be equal to what? Normally, the input term or output term should be flux multiplied by surface area or the surface perpendicular to the flux. So in across 
the surface in the side way, the flux itself is phi r z. It is located at r. That's the flux. Multiply by the area perpendicular to the flux. What is the area? What is the area? 2 pi r l, right? The area would be the inner area here multiplied by the height. That's 2 pi r l. Of course, phi r c is consisting of two terms. Tau r z at r plus rho vr vz at r. However, vr here becomes zero already. So we have only one term left. All right. Next is output. Output should look the same. So it becomes phi r c as r plus delta r multiplied by the area. What is the area? The area is supposed to be area perpendicular to the flux, located right at the flux. So now we are talking about the area on the outer side of the ring. So the radius here would be r plus, plus delta r. 2 pi times r plus delta r multiplied by l. Okay? So it would be 2 pi r plus delta r l. Again, this one becomes tau r z at r plus delta r plus rho v r v z, which is zero. That's one side. The other direction would be top and bottom. Okay? So input in top bottom direction should be VCZ coming in as Z equal to zero. And what is the area perpendicular to this flux? You have flux, you multiply by the area perpendicular to it. So the flux going along z direction, going this direction. So the area that you must be used for multiplication supposed to be highlighted area. It would be area of the ring. What is the area of the ring? There are two ways to calculate area of this ring. First, you can use 2 pi plus del 2 pi r plus delta r square. I'm sorry, pi r plus delta r square minus pi r square. That's one way to do it. But that's complicated. Okay. The other way would be approximation. If you cut down this cylinder and somehow spread it out. You can turn this one into something like this. If you assume that delta r is very, very small, the curvature will be neglect. Okay? So the highlight area will be spread out something like this. This is L. This would be delta R. Okay? And the length here would be what? 
that would be 2 pi r. All right? Or you can say something like this. If you look from the, from the top and you cut it out, you get the area something like this. The thickness here would become delta r. The outside dimension would be 2 pi r plus delta r. The inside dimension would be 2 pi r, right? But as long as you assume that delta r is very, very small, because later on we will assume or we will take limit delta r approaching zero anyway, we will assume these two lines would be very equal. So if you do that, it can be approximated to be something like this. Okay? With the thickness here, delta r, and the inside, 2 pi r. Okay? So in this case, the area will be 2 pi r times delta r, the area perpendicular to the flux. All right? Then, phi CZ is consisting of three terms, tau ZZ plus pressure in Z direction plus rho VZ VZ. Everything takes place at Z equal to zero. All right, and we already determined this one becomes zero. So we have only two terms left. In similar manner, for output, you get the same things. But at C equal to L, the area will be the same as well. All right. The last term is force. Force itself is thought to be mg, or the weight of the fluid within the shell. The weight of the fluid is supposed to be volume multiplied by density. Right? This one is mg, which is equal to volume multiplied by density, multiplied by G. This volume supposed to be volume of the shell. The volume of the shell is the area on top multiplied by L. So this area multiplied by L. That's volume. Multiplied by rho G. Okay? Now you get force. So once you have all terms, then you can set up in minus out added by force. Let's start with this pair. Okay? 